It's me, Larry. I didn't come welcoming you to the really, really knowing God channel. I'm bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of our great God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adineko Center for Education, the PLACA. Yes, it's the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gem stone upon the crown of Jesus. We shall intrude this morning on how to identify a genuine father in the Lord. We are coming from uh, 2 Samuel 18, from verse 19 to 33. Thereabout. Let us pray together and right after we jump into it. Father God, we bless your name, we worship and adore you, Almighty God. Lord, truly you are good and we continue to say so here because that's our true testimony. Lord, as we go on to share your word this morning, we receive your help in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be utterance, let there be hearing. In Jesus' name, we will not be hearers alone, but doers also of your word. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Okay then, Second Samuel 18 from 19. Then, uh, this is the story of uh, Absalom. Absalom had just been killed. Then Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said, Let me run now and take the news to the king, how the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. But Joab said to him, You shall not take the news this day, for you shall take the news another day. But today you shall no take no news, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed himself to Joab and ran. And Ahimaaz, the son of uh, uh, Zadok said to, again to Joab, but whatever happens, please let me run after the Cushite. Joab said, why will you run, my son, since you have no news ready? But whatever happens, he said, let me run. So he said to him, run. Then Ahimaaz ran uh, by the way of the plain and outran the Cushite. Now David was sitting between two gate, between the two gates, and the watchman set up, um, so went up to the root over the gate to, to the wall, lifted his eyes and looked, and there was a man running alone. Then the watchman cried out and told the king, and the king said, if he is alone, there's news in his mouth and he came rapidly and he drew near and the watchman saw another man running and the watchman caught to the gate he said there's another man running alone and the king said he also brings news so the watchman said i think the running of the first is like the running of ahimaaz the son of zadok and the king said he is a good man he comes with good news so ahimaaz called out and said to the king all is well and he bowed down with his face to the earth before the king and said blessed be the lord your god who has delivered up the men who raised their hand against my lord the king and the king said is a young man absalom safe ahimaaz answered when you have sent the king's servant and me your servant i saw a great tumult but i did not know what it was about and the king said turn aside and stand there so he turned aside and stood there just then the kushat came and the kushat said there is good news my lord the king for the lord has avenged you this day of all those who rose against you and the king said to the kushat is the young man absalom safe so the Kushites answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise against you to do you harm be like the young man. And David was deeply moved and went up the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, Thus, O my son, Absalom, my son, Absalom, if only I had died in your place, O Absalom, my son, my son. Right then. So <clears throat> we find the Ahimas, the son of Zadok. Um, you want to remember that. Uh, he was the one that played the role of um, himself with his partner. People going to, I mean, going to inform David of whatever uh, news they got from the town. Okay, so okay, the war had now, or the battle had now started, and then finally uh, Jonathan died, and um, there was need to take news back home. So Ahima said, "Look, let me run and take the news to the king." And Joab said, "You are not going to take the news today. You are going to take the news another day because the news today is a bad news." And the man said, "Look, let me take this. Let me go. Let me. It's not for you to take this kind of news." Now, what we learn from there is that Ahima's did not really know who he was. Was it not yesterday or the day before that we were talking about things like this? This uh, in the story of the uh, the older son of uh, the senior brother to the prodigal son. Okay. He didn't know who he was. He was a carrier of good news, you know, and uh, he was going to cheapen himself. He was going to lower himself. He was going to place himself where God has not placed him. That's what he was going to do, you know, and that's what happens with some of us. You know, I was, um, can you remember I was celebrating a song the other time, I know who God says I am. That song, I really, really do appreciate it. You need to know who God says you are. God has blessed this fellow, has made him a carrier of good news, but he was not going to stay in the place where God has placed him. He was going to drop low. Now, some of us do that. We get excited by the wrong things. We get excited by hollow things, things that do not carry 
any weight in the presence of God. We get excited by such things and, you know, therefore allow ourselves to slide down a little bit into that other level. Okay, so, so he really tried and Joab was saying, no, that's not your level. You are beyond that. You are above that. You are bigger than that. It's not for you. So he sent the Kushite. The Kushite was an Ethiopian slave. Okay, and uh, you know, so he said, he said, let me still go with the Kushite. Ah, why would you, a son, a freeborn, why would you come to the level of, of an Ethiopian slave? Why would you drop yourself? And that's what some of us do. The position of sonship where God has placed us, we drop from there and we get beggarly and, and you know, begin to behave like slaves and behave, behave the way we ought not to be. That's what happened to Ahima there. He dropped out of that excitement. Excitement over what? You, at times, some of the things that we get excited about, when you weigh, weigh them properly, you find that these things have no weight. And yet we get excited about, about them unnecessarily and then, you know, plunge our lives into such matters. That's what happened with this guy. Anyway, he ran and over, ran, and then the Bible says David was sitting between the gates and there was um, a watchman who used to go to the wall to see what was happening from afar. Again, David's military uh, setup, you know, that was the watchman thing. And then David had a knowledge of war. Honest, you know, the Bible says, with good advice, make your war. If you are going to be a Christian in spiritual warfare, you need to have the knowledge of war, knowledge of what you are doing, spiritual equivalent of it now. David had, he said, if it is a, it's a single person running, oh yes, there is news in his mouth. Because he understood war. He knew the way they pass information and all that. If you are going to be a warrior for God, you need to understand spiritual warfare not just jump into it and you know <laughs> you need to be strategic you need to understand the thing and know the way it runs and, and plan things very well and understand signs very very well that was what happened with david here let's go on so um uh the guy finally uh came and D david said oh he's a good man he comes with the good news can you see so even what david said corroborates the position of joab you are a bringer of good news. You are a gospel carrier. You are an evangelist. You are somebody who, who bears good witness. You don't carry, you know, false news on social media. It's not your portion. You know, like I say all the time, be quick to receive but be slow to share. There are certain things you don't you don't share because it's not your portion. You are you are bigger than that. But some of us don't know that. We just share anything. We just share anything. And I see some things being shared by some people. I say, oh, really? It too? You know, and you too sharing this kind of rubbish? Yeah, that's the kind of thing. David said, oh, he's a good man. He brings good news. And yet this guy wasn't bringing any good news because he has chipped himself. The way some of us chip in ourselves, you know, for whatever reason. Some of us chip in ourselves for whatever reason. You see, uh, you know, I don't know how, you know, some people who, who work for God will be, you are, you, so you got to take pictures with politicians. For what? For what? You know, you are, we are, we, I don't know. The way we even behave, I said, we chip in ourselves, you know, uh, and I don't think it's, it, uh, it, it ought to be the case. And then, so the man had no news. He said, all is well, bowed down, said some stuff, you know, and all that. And then asked about uh, um, Absalom, he had no news. And then the king said, turn aside and stand there. In other words, stand aside. And this happens actually in the course of our relationship with God. How God will, you know, ask some people to stand aside. Honestly, just stand aside. As some people, God will say, stand aside. I'm waiting for the person who's going to give me better. Just stand aside. Because where you we have placed you, you are not there. So stand aside. It happens. And may that not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So the other one came now and then delivered the message. And David went, Oh, Absalom, my son, my son, and he went and cried. That is the heart of your father. Okay, and so he, you know, he he, he felt for he felt for the, the son and said, "Oh, I wish I had died in your place." And that is that brings me to the punchline of, of our sharing this morning. These people we continue referring to as our Father in the Lord. There is a difference between a Christian leader and a Christian father. A Christian father behaves like a father. A Christian father is concerned, genuinely concerned about his spiritual children. A, 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 a spiritual father will sacrifice anything for his spiritual children. A, a spiritual father, a, a true father in the Lord, a genuine father in the Lord will say this, I wish this happened to me, Lord, instead of my boy, instead of my girl, instead of my daughter, instead of my son. That is the heart of a real spiritual father. A real father in the Lord will want the children to supersede him. They want them 
trying to be bigger than him. That is a genuine father in the Lord. <clears throat> a genuine father in the Lord is looking forward to a day when his son is bigger and he is less. Yes, that's a genuine father in the Lord. A genuine father in the Lord um, would behave like David behaved there. Something happened to um, son in the Lord. And quickly, the father in the Lord associates himself on that son. That, uh, you know, this person has done this, you know, I don't have any. <laughs> That's not a genuine father in the Lord. A genuine father in the Lord will say, my son, my son, and beat his chest and cover his face. And, you know, say, well, uh, he has made his mistake, but I remain his father. He remains my son, and I'm sure he's going to spring back. Because my children always spring back, no matter how the mistake. Not to dissociate yourself immediately, because something has happened to that person. That is not a genuine father in the Lord. I'm saying this because it is so much around. We go on about our father, our this. And we call all kinds of big names. They are leaders. I don't doubt that at all. But about this fatherhood, no, it's a different story altogether. It's a different kettle of fish altogether. And um, when you see a genuine father, you know, in the Lord, he, is, he, is, he, he wants you to be yourself. He doesn't, he's not looking to uh, you always coming around, you know, uh, to genuflect and to, and to do this and to say, Father, it seems that without you, we can't do it too. That is not a genuine father in the Lord. A genuine father in the Lord is the one who is trying to tell the son or tell the children, you really can do it. I will be behind you, but you don't need me to do it. Look, I'm going to go one day and I want you guys to know the way to fix these things yourself. That's a genuine father. That's a, it's not the one who wants everybody to come around to him and to say, ah, but for you, sir, ah, I've come to see you. <laughs> That's the way it is. they say it where I come from. Oh, you are the one I've come to see. Obviously, you are in this front. You know, but people still like that kind of language. Ah, you are the one we have come to see, sir. You know that without you, people can know we cannot move. <laughs> you know, and all that. That is not a genuine father in law. A genuine father in the Lord wants you to be able to do things. He convinces you that you can do it. Yeah, you really can. You know, and all that. Yeah, don't worry, I'll be behind you. But don't worry, I want you to do this whole thing on your own and then I'll be clapping for you, I'll be rooting for you. Don't worry, you can fix it. Yeah, praise God. I can go on and when it comes to this particular area, but then our time is up at this point in time and I want you to go back and study this thing all the more. There is a way a father in the Lord, a genuine father in the Lord should conduct himself. It's not just about preaching, no. It's not just about bigness, no. That's not what there is to this father in, law, father in the Lord thing. No, no, no. It's about fatherhood. It's about being really there for the children. Hallelujah. God help us in Jesus' mighty name.